What's that song? Honor of a lonely heart. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Who sings it? Police? Who's that? The, uh, yes. The, yeah, yes. 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 That's right. Yes. Honor of a lonely heart. One of the most perfectly produced songs in the history of music, that song. So is your mom. <laughs> Welcome back to our stupid reactions eating some Corbin. I'm ready. I'll say Instagram, Instagram Twitter, 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 one of the quickest from trailer reaction to movie reviews. I mean, Can you blame us, guys? Just based off who's Can in you it? blame us? It, just, it, just it based ticked off. off all of the acting, and, and we needed to do another Punjabi film, and acting, and Irfan, and so, Tilotala. Uh, but and, yes, this is uh, Kisa. Is yes, that how you pronounce that? I would call it Kisa. Kisa? Yep. Uh, I don't know if there's a, a better pronunciation for that, but The Tale of a Lonely Ghost. Uh, is that what made you think of that song? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I thought about it. Uh, but it's uh, a 2000... When did this come out? Right. Two th I want to say if I'm... 2013. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's not that long ago. Um, oh, that was eight years ago. Yeah, but that was not, it wasn't like yeah. 2009 or something. Uh, but directed and written by, say... Un um, by... Here, I have it on my notes as well. Uh, Anup Singh. Anup Singh. Which, what's the deal? Here we go again. His second film. Oh, dang. Dang. <laughs> uh, starring a bunch of people, but the, the main four are Irfan Khan, Tiska Chopra, uh, Tilatama Shom... Sh How do you say your last name? Shom Shomay. Shomay. Yeah, Tilatama and, Shomay. Uh, Rasika and Rasika Dugal. Dugal. Uh, those are the Is it Dugal or Dugal? I don't know. I'm going to guess it's Dugal. Dugal. Rasika Dugal. That sounds, that sounds right. Right. Uh, but I know a lot of you haven't seen this film. And I don't really know where it's available. And either. I don't know why it's uh, not available. Yeah, but... It seems strange. If you, haven't, if you haven't watched it, uh, go watch it and then uh, come back. Um, it's kind of hard to talk about without spoilers. <laughs> it's, it's, Im it's impossible. There's, there's kind of a big thing that happens there it. at the end. <laughs> um, well, several things happen that yeah. suggest to, to dive into the film, we're so, going to have to talk about some things that... Unfortunately, we may get only like 27 people who watch this review yeah. because you all need to go watch the movie and then come back. And see we it. saw it on a site, um, but I think it, M Mubi, somebody said it might be available. Z, it might be available, but those aren't available for us. Exactly. More than likely, it's way more available for you in India than it is for us here in the States. Yeah, um, but I know a lot of people didn't see this film. Um, but regardless, we wanted to watch it, saw the trailer, yes. Um, so Rick, your initial thoughts, please. It lived up to the hype. Uh, I have a lot to say. I wrote a paragraph, but it's about the moral, what, what I think the basic meaning of the film is. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrote a paragraph about that. Mm -hmm. But as far as the, the actual film is concerned, I only had a couple of things that I wish were a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I, I really, really liked it a yeah. lot. <laughs> Uh, I liked all except for maybe the last 10 minutes. Oh, you didn't like the last 10 minutes. I, we'll, we'll get to the ending and I'll talk about why I okay. I didn't I didn't really enjoy that part. But the rest of it, I mean, in terms of acting, it's going to be hard to get better than this for a lot of people. This is, it's, it's one of my favorite Irfan performances uh, it's, because it's, it's so different. It's so different for him. Uh, and I love it when actors do that. And that was like one, my, one of my things with, even though we haven't seen all this stuff, I'm like, Irfan, he's phenomenal. I would love to see him do some different stuff, and clearly we just hadn't seen enough. Um, but he did a phenomenal job. Let's talk about the acting first, because yeah. we're going to talk about all four of these actors. But yeah. Irfan first. Man, <laughs> the dude is incredible, because in this, once again, if you haven't seen it, go watch it, please. Go watch it. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, this guy is awful, okay? But the way Irfan plays him, you still, for some God knows what reason, sympathize for him. And that's the mark of a great actor. <laughs> it's, a, 
the mark of a great actor, a well-written character. Uh -huh. And the best part about that, which is not a surprise coming from one of the greatest actors who has ever graced the screen, mm -hmm. is the fact that this is the kind of role that an inexperienced actor would turn mm -hmm. into a stereotype. And make him a villain. And make him a villain. Even though he is. And it, they would make him a stereotype. And it goes thing. against everything. So the school of thought that I come from when it comes to acting is Uta Hagen, and then the person who took the baton from her, who I'm blessed to say is my acting teacher, uh, is, is Howard Fine. Mm -hmm. And one of the cardinal sins of this approach to acting is to, to prejudge a character. Mm -hmm. Because we never prejudge ourselves, and I promise you there's things about ourselves that are repugnant. Yeah. And we don't see them, and we don't think they're repugnant because it's us. Yeah. So you cannot do that to a character you're playing most especially one that you yourself, because the thing you have to do, another trait of Uta Hagen and Howard Fine, is you need to find yourself in the character. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You got to go to some places in yourself that are pretty deplorable and probably some places that you just aren't there. Yeah. And you've got to connect them somehow and make them. And he did exactly what you said. He, I was actually somewhat empathetic mm -hmm. toward a guy that ordinarily I would want to see just yeah. beating the crap out of So him. it's about halfway through, I guess. Because um, he does awful, yeah. awful things. Yeah, but I, I turn to my wife and I'm like, here's what's incredible about your fun. He could play, he's playing him, obviously, honestly, like we said. Yes. You, you have to play him honestly. Right. And you can't, this guy doesn't believe he's doing anything wrong. Yeah. He, he also believes he, everything he's doing is for the best of his family, for the best for himself. Yeah. It's not. Right. <laughs> By any stretch. But you have to play the character that way. You can't play him like, oh, I'm this terrible guy who just wants a son that, like, who would be an awful, awful performance if an actor played it that way. He plays it so honestly. And also, it's, I don't know if it's his acting ability or if it's just a gift he has that some actors have this gift is that they just have a wonderful demeanor about them like ability about that them. they just can't shake and so yeah. that that helps them when they're playing this character that even though he's awful you still end up feeling for him for some reason and i would love to see him play a character that goes very um very off mm -hmm. the, the, the character that always comes to mind for me for one of my favorite actors of all time is robin williams in one hour photo yeah because in that film you do, you do like him at first and you feel sorry for the guy. But yeah. one of the reasons Robin Williams fans didn't like it, which I wish they had seen him more than just the comic and seen him for the thespian, because he was first and foremost an actor, yeah. uh, was the dark, dark place that that character goes in. That character's scary. Yeah. You don't like him. Whereas with this character, he does scary things, but the man himself, and, and it's one of the most important things to recognize because the demonization of bad guys mm -hmm. is not... Uh, it's first of all, it's not honest because even it's like a really well round the ultimate evil person we think of in contemporary history is Hitler. Yeah. Well, I promise you, there were probably moments when if you were around him, you probably might have liked the guy. Well, he, he, was very, had, he was apparently very charismatic. Very charismatic, probably yeah. told some great jokes. Yeah. Life of the party. Mm -hmm. He was a freaking spectacular public speaker. Yeah. And you can't just, you know, put him over to the side that way. And I agree with you. Mm -hmm. There the aspect of Irfan. Just being a likable persona in and of himself helps. It, it helps. Yeah. Um, now the ladies. Uh, let's talk. Even though, uh, let's talk about the one we haven't really seen very much. Tiska Tiska Chopra, who yeah. I think we've seen in in either short films or, or smaller. Yeah, but parts. not nearly as much as Rasika or Attila yeah. Atama. Yeah. She did a phenomenal job. Great job. I, I actually wish they could have fleshed out their relationship. A I, I would have loved to have seen more of her because I felt, and it says a lot. That is an ensemble. You, <laughs> the movie stars Irfan Khan, everybody. Yeah, and the rest of the cast is right there with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, I was as impressed with them as I was with Topeka and Piku. Absolutely. When she was opposite Irfan and Big B, and she's holding her own on screen with those guys. Yeah, she. Yeah. I thought did a really good job. I would have loved it even more because uh, a couple of my gripes with this film, which we'll get into later. Um, I think it could have been two and a half hours. It think, absolutely could have been I think been they could have fleshed this out a it little more. It could have been. Uh, so they could, uh, like, their relationship, the, the whole dynamic with, um, you know, the mom having to deal with the dad being yeah. a crazy person. And What is the runtime? Uh, about hour 50, I think. Yeah, here's the challenge, I think. It wouldn't surprise me if 
the director, if uh, Mr. Singh, had, uh, if he had opted with the writer to keep it on the short side because they wanted to hit the film festival circuit and appeal to the mindset of the West. They might have, yeah. Our, we've become Indianized in terms of being okay with long run times now. And yeah. I, I'm with you. I would have, if this had run 215 or 220, yeah, just to build up her relationship with yeah. him, maybe give us a little more. Mm -hmm. Sure. But I thought she did a phenomenal job. She, uh, all of her scenes with Irfan, it was a beautiful, awful, beautiful moment when after Irfan, which one of one wonderful direction by, um, um, are we getting into spoilers? No, no, uh, no, no, sorry. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So obviously, Another once again, scene. if you haven't seen it, go watch go it. Go watch it because we're going to talk about, about some things in the film. But the, the, the moment where obviously the, the son fell and then Irfan, after the doctor left, beat his daughters. I was so uncomfortable. It was so well done. It was extremely, they didn't put score. They just let you watch Irfan beat these women. Mercilessly, like with everything he had. Yeah, yeah. which once again, having Irfan play that type of character, I'm like, Oh my God. You know, the last time we saw him in a negative role, quote unquote. Was Pan Singh Tomar a little bit? Well, no, I'm thinking actually uh, Sub Kun Moff when he was oh, the abusive yeah. husband. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar. That character actually is a bit darker, mm -hmm. I think. Even though this guy does way worse stuff. Yes. What that guy does is awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And But there was a, there was a bitter, dark, unredeemable edge to that guy. Mm -hmm. There was... I, I sensed from this character, and it's the well-roundedness of the writing, directing, and especially of Irfan and the supporting people around him. The, uh, and we'll, this gets into what we'll talk about, mm -hmm. kind of the moral of the story. Uh, he's he is what he is, not just by reason of himself. He's a product of what has happened. Yeah, and you, it's the nature versus nurture aspect of. And I wonder if that was Irfan's approach to the character. He's like, how much of this is really his responsibility? And how much of this is he's become who he is because this is how he was taught to be, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And so that after that moment, which was an awful, awful scene, but so so well done. Mm -hmm. The fact that they didn't put a score behind it, they didn't. They just let you feel beautiful direction, beautiful direction, uh, which is what I, I you want in that moment because it's an awful thing that's happening. Um, but then after that, they were talking, and then Irfan tries to have a touching moment with his <laughs> wife, yeah. and she. Sh and he lays down on her lap, and I'm like, bro. Right. <laughs> and she did a phenomenal job as an actress, and you, you saw her uncomfortableness. Yeah, you saw her shutting like, down. She can't do anything. Uh, that's exactly what yeah. I thought. She's stuck, man. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what I, is she going to do? I thought that was wonderful. Yeah, I did uh, too. She did a great job. Rasika Dolotama. Oh, boy. Loved it. Uh, I, how much did you love the getting to know you scenes between the two of them when she's when she discovers mm -hmm. the true nature for both of them, both Tilatama's believability of everything I thought about myself is shattered because of what I was lied about. But I I found the last time I felt this connection with two women getting to know each other was in a film. Uh, if you haven't seen this film, it's Portrait of a Lady on Fire from France, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's a it's that's all I'm gonna say. And I, I so loved their love for each other. Yeah, I, had a, I, I, did, I did really enjoy their chemistry. It was off the charts. I loved it. I, have, I had an issue with the writing and how they built their characters a little bit. Um, In what way? Because they built it up when they, she didn't know that she was a woman. Um, they built it up. There was a lot of the sexual tension. Mm -hmm. They did a phenomenal, both of them, uh, yes. Rasika Tilatama did a phenomenal job in building their relationship, they said, I fell in love with a woman. I fell in yeah, love with a I woman. Yeah, I love that moment when they both laugh. Five minutes later, we'll live together as friends and sisters. You're right. So I don't know what happened in the writing room, whether they didn't want to go that route. I'm fine if, like, after she found out she's a woman, if, if like, they're like, yeah, we, 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 we love each other. We want to live as sisters. Or they love each other and they're going to be together. So they gave me multiple things there that I was like, I don't... I don't even know if you know what you want to do with this relationship. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have a problem with that at yeah. all. Yeah, that, that it, didn't bother it, it didn't me. make any sense that I fell in love with a woman, I fell in love with a woman, five minutes later, we'll live together as friends and sisters. Well, it did for me. Like, for example, if it was the, if 
you know, if I were in a situation like that, because I thought they loved each other and they like, um, like together, like they wanted to be intimate with each other. See, that's, a, that's what I thought. That's where I would have been fine if it was the other way, but you have to build it that way. But that's why I actually like that choice because what it does, and I love stories like this is it takes it to the place where the love at that level, a depth of compatibility and wanting to be together forever transcends the physical expression with one another. Oh, well, that's true, but don't say, I love you, I love you, but then we're gonna live together as brother, sister, blah, 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 blah. So th that was just the confusing part of me. But once again, that doesn't take away the board. That's just a writing nitpick from me. Their performances were phenomenal. Beautiful. Tiska Chopra, quickly rising uh, for me. Uh, she this she was so different because the other two that we've seen her in outside of the prostitute in um, mm -hmm. uh, what was that from? Um, um, yeah, the, 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 sorry, the, no awesome. one. Right, um, but that was just a little bit part. Yeah, uh, 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 anyway, go ahead, move on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, she was so different in this. I even believed at times I was like, wait, you mean Rasika? I'm talking to Tilatama right now. Oh, okay, Tilatama, gotcha. Because you said Tiska. So I immediately went over to Tiska Chopra. No, no, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Tilatama. Tilatama. Okay. Uh, I even believed her multiple times as, as playing a man. She, I thought, carried herself very well. She, yeah. she carried herself way different than she carried her in the other films. Because mm -hmm. uh, there, she had almost an innocence about her, and I thought she did a phenomenal job. The writing, I thought, did a good job. And when she was putting on dresses, I was like, I even said out loud, I'm like, she's not gonna feel comfortable in a dress. Right. Her personality has been shaped, even though she is a woman and like probably identifies as a woman, her personality and self has been molded by her father who says she's been a man her entire life. Right. So she's not just gonna be able to switch. No, 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 no. It's, it's like if like somebody just told me I was a woman and now I have to wear a bunch of dresses, mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel normal in that. Correct. That's not how I was brought up for right. better or worse. Right, yeah, that's our perspective. <laughs> uh, um, but like, I thought she did a really good job at, at, at handling those complexities of that character. I did too, which is not an easy thing to do. I believed them all of the time, mm -hmm. uh, all the way through up and until the end. And and I, so getting now to, for me, now I'm very interested to know what it is about the last 10 to 15 minutes you didn't like, because for me, the last 10 to 15 minutes basically summarize the totality of what the whole film is supposed to be about. Mm. Okay. So I'm, I'm interested to know what it is you didn't like about it. No, I didn't. I just, I, it came out of left field for me. And normally I'm very into endings that catch me off guard and, and all sure. that kind of stuff. And seeing something coming. Yes. Yeah. But you normally have to build it up. This world for me built up realism. Mm -hmm. And then you took it into supernatural mm -hmm. there in the last 10 minutes. And you didn't build that outside of there was one time in the beginning where they obviously Irfan was talking about a curse yes. and, and that whole thing. Yes. I get that. But the rest of the time I was getting realism. Everything was in reality. It was. And then it's just flipped on a dime. And I, I, I understand what the message was. I get it. It's just for me, it was out of left field and I would have preferred it didn't dis. I mean, I did. I was ready to put this in like hell around for me, and yes. that that jumped it down for me because of the ending. Oh, it! I absolutely. I didn't hate the film. Obviously, as, I love the first hour forty. <laughs> no, as it as it um, as it got into that part of the story, and I realized what they were doing. I started making a list while I was watching, mm -hmm. and I'm just putting down the films that I love the most and would recommend the most in recent times we've seen them, and it was, you know, parched. Hello, Rao, mm -hmm. and this. Yeah, uh, I put this in that same place. I that aspect of it, um, it it didn't doesn't bother me, and because um, of because of the point of the story, which mm -hmm. I think I know the point of the story. If I don't, it's okay. If this is my takeaway, I think, but I think I know the point of the story, mm. and it's. Um, uh, but I I like. It's nice to see a film that's representational of something of the supernatural by not differentiating between the invisible realm and the physical realm in any way and just letting them blend with one another because mm. the impact of the two on one another, most especially the invisible into the physical realm, is more poignant, my personal belief, than most people give it credit to. And if it's not that definitively where there is a recognition of it, just say scientifically. Gotcha. 
it is that way in the way people think and behave. Mm. The things that they believe become that which they actually do. So for me, that's the paragraph I wrote, was the moral of the story, and it's related to this ending. Gotcha. So here's, here's what I thought the ending, the last 10 to 15 minutes, and especially the ending, which is also kind of revealed in the title because there's a reason they added the tale of a lonely ghost. Yeah. So here's, here's my paragraph. I believe Umber Singh, that's Irfan's character, represents the generational spirit of patriarchal chauvinism, mm -hmm. a male-centric bigotry that considers the only worth found in feminism to be those that only serve the needs of the man's ego yeah. and to achieve the ultimate goal of the deification of the masculine self. This generational spirit is so blind to its own warped moral construct and deviant desire to find its eternal moon mm -hmm. that it will literally destroy anything and everything that gets in the way of it acquiring what it needs to fill its insatiable desire to elevate the male ego above all. In an ironic twist of fate, in its pursuit <laughs> to achieve masculine dominance in its lineage and legacy, it unwittingly destroys its own lineage and legacy because in the end, nothing remains. Wife dead, daughter dead, daughter-in-law dead, another daughter gone mad, and the generational home with all its belongings burned to the ground with nothing remaining except of all things, a mirror the perfect object for the insatiable ego. And I think the actual physical man that existed and the ghost that comes mm -hmm. is this was the actual person, yeah. but then the ghost is that which was possessing him, which is this generational spirit within male chauvinism that yeah. is not satiated and does not stop in search of, you know, my moon. So to see that transition where he was just there and then interacting for me, I thought underscored the fact that this interweaving of this generational spirit is so permanent in the physical realm mm -hmm. that it's, it's inseparable. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Oh no, I totally, totally get that. I think that's a perfect explanation of what they were going for. I just, it took, I, I think they could have made that message by keeping it in the real. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, but I, also, I, I don't... <laughs> another little thing I noticed, and this is... I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff we missed because we aren't Indian, we aren't uh, Punjabi, and even... But I did do some research on something because I knew we're being told this for some reason. The Festival of Lori, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's central. Mm -hmm. Apparently, that, that central theme of the Lori songs yeah. is this legend of somebody named Dulabati who lived in Punjab and was regarded as a hero for rescuing Hindu girls from being forcibly taken to be sold into the slave market. Mm. And as a part of those celebrations, it was common and traditional for the children to go around uh, homes singing those songs. Uh, and especially the youngsters would go and the girls would go mm. and sing. So I remember there was a moment where uh, Tilda Thomas' character, who, uh, what's the, uh, Kumar, <clears throat> as a little boy girl, mm -hmm was watching the other girls go to go sing the Lori songs. Yeah. And you could see, the, I, I loved that uh, aspect of the character, which made me think of a whole other aspect of this that wasn't intentionally pro, uh, dominant, but mm -hmm. is still there, of anybody <coughs> who was born male, but inside feels female, mm -hmm. and what that must be like to see what the girls are doing. Yeah. And inside you're like, I want to be doing that, but I'm being told I can't. Yeah. It, it touched on that yeah. for me too. Absolutely. Yeah. I get getting emotional. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and and, and uh, I'm glad you, you like the ending so we have this juxtaposition, really. Yes. Uh, the moon at the end. Did you notice the moon on the... I mean, come on. Uh, but like great. I said, I, I really enjoyed this film. It's 100% worth a watch. It's really sad that it wasn't as accepted as it was, or as watched as it could have been. There's one other thing... It's not really the film's fault, but it, it was frustrating to me. Uh, they blurred out nudity. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Twice. It was, it, <sighs> and I found out it was because this was given a UA something. Okay. And whatever, it's not the film's fault, but they, they had to give it a UA, and so they had to blur it out. It's just really frustrating. Really frustrating. Because that takes away making the actors do it in the first place. So in the vulnerability... Tilotama and the other, I think it was Tiska. It happened twice. I, I, I think it was Tiska at the beginning, but the great scene, Tilotama, it, it was, was very Shakespearean. It was Tiska's bath. Yeah. And it was really from behind. Yeah. Which was dumb because but also they showed Tilotama from the back. I was, 
when she starts yelling at her father ghost, yeah. right? And she starts saying what she's saying. And I know she's having a meltdown and no one else can see him, but yeah. she can. Mm -hmm. And I see her go to take this off. Everything inside of me was, give me Cersei yeah. walking the shame walk. Give me full frontal right now because that would be what we need to see right now yeah. to be completely to shaken have the vulnerability of to this character. our core and the vulnerability of this woman and the fact that she is fully embracing who she is mm -hmm. and what he did to her and saying, I am this. Yep. And the blurriness of it it takes away. Just pulled me away from what could have been yeah. one of the most powerful cinematic moments I've seen in a long, long time. It is extremely frustrating. Really, really uh, deeply aggravating. You shouldn't even have the scene if you're going to do that. And it's, because again, it, it's not the filmmaker's fault. No, we get it. We, it, but it's just extremely frustrating because that's a, it was a very Hamlet moment oh. that she because she was she was putting her all into the scene, and she I believe like. Uh, uh, Radica Opte and, and, and Parch, or no, was it Parched? It was Parched. It was Parched. Was extremely vulnerable in that moment, but you took away the whole meaning for it yeah. by doing that. And it is not... Like, just shoot it from the neck up if you're going to do that. Yeah, but even then, <laughs> I got to tell you, and, and the, what I'm about to say is not a... Uh, you're a mm. It's not a chastisement of, mm -hmm. of uh, the director in no. any way, Okay. I can just it's tell more you, frustration of censorship it's than the, anything. It's the frustration of censorship, and I can tell you that if this was something I had wanted to create as a director and a writer, I don't know what I would have done. I wouldn't have released because it. I don't know that I would have. I don't know that I would have released it, and I would have had just a director's cut available for anybody who wants to see it. Yep. Because for me, the the pinnacle moment that means the most to that is that moment. Yeah. And anybody who thinks that a moment like that where we would see her naked is either voyeuristic or pornographic has a demented and warped opinion mm -hmm. of the human body and sexuality, because that is not a sexual moment by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. Yep. And the human body is actually a pretty beautiful thing. Yep. So if you go into museums, you'll see a lot of nudes painted and sculpted, but in a film, what and this film has nothing that would attract a young audience to watch it. So it's not like a kid should accidentally stumble upon this film. It's an adult film yep. with adult content. Yep. It was <clears throat> yeah. It's really weird. frustrating. I don't care that boobies make you uncomfortable. Don't watch a film. If the film makes you uncomfortable, don't watch it. Yeah. Uh, uh, it makes I, you I've, uncomfortable. I've fine. This, I've heard this argument. It's like. If we're watching a film with our parents and boob show, I don't give two shits. Does your mom have boobs? She does. And it's fine if that's what you guys do. Then don't watch films where people show Don't tops. censor my films because they make you uncomfortable. Exactly. Just don't watch them. A rating system is good. Right. Censorship is... Sorry. It's not about this film. It, <laughs> censorship is one of the things that gets me so fired up. Because it really it is. It pisses me the fuck off. But this film is great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways... Once again, I really hope you're not here if you haven't seen the film. But if you haven't, please go watch it. It's yeah. definitely worth your time. Uh, and let us know what's the, from all these films. From Irfan, Tiska, Telutama, and Rasika. Oh, one real quick, quick, quick thing. Huh. When she shoots him. Oh, yeah. I was so mad. Because <laughs> you wanted to like, see Irfan. Hey, I was like, you did it to us again? <laughs> the last Irfan movie I saw, middle of the film, he's gone. I was so pissed, but thankfully he's yeah. not gone. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> let us know what's the next Punjabi film we and need to Irfan, watch. Irfan, Irfan, yeah. and Tilotama, and Rasika. Yeah. And yeah. let us know uh, down below.